Let's try to actually induce some small pieces though. Instead of avoiding it, what if we actually dive into that? There's an idea of grout when you have a good looking simulation. Grout is kind of like the mortar in between bricks. If you imagine that these big chunks are bricks, the area in between them would be the mortar, the, the sticky stuff holding it together. When you have large simulations, this is not as true for small simulations, when you have large icebergs collapsing or cliffs collapsing, you're gonna have lots of little pieces in between. And that happens because these big massive pieces are kind of grinding against each other, making breaking off lots of little pieces. While it largely stays intact, little pieces will fall off. So what we want, we want to see those cracks, we want to see those little pieces uh, all jammed in between here. And that again, I'm going to refer to for the rest of the lesson as grout. And we can kind of, we can make that happen. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we can just basically throw more cutting planes in it, but we're gonna do it in an intelligent way. So let's come back to here. We made 16 and we'll have 16 again, but let's temporarily go back to just having one, just so that we can work on one cutting plane at a time. If we jitter the one cutting plane, it looks like this. That's cool. But what if we have two cutting planes on top of each other? So I'm gonna say copy and transform. As again, I kind of alluded to earlier, the old copy SOP in Houdini has been broken down into a few different SOPs now. This is the copying with attributes, this is the copying with transformations, and there's actually even, the, uh, the third part is also here, copy stamp, which you also might remember. I guess they figured that too much was packed into one node and they broke it out into three pieces. At any rate, right now we have just this one grid. If I copy it, now I have two grids on top of each other. You can kind of see the numbers are all mashed up. But they still occupy the same exact space. Those point positions are what goes into the jitter, or rather the noise, I should say. They're the, that's, that position lookup is what determines the output of the noise. Now these points occupy the same exact space, so we don't actually see anything yet. What if, though, we could somehow get a different noise for the other plane that's on top of it? We know we can force a different noise by, let's say, changing this offset. So let's try to change the offset for the other plane. And the way we can do that is let's just create some kind of attribute that tells the difference between the two. Here we go with the connectivity, and we'll keep it in the point this time. The connectivity, as you'll no doubt recall, We'll create an attribute, an integer, that says, I am part of geometry island zero, I am part of geometry island one, meaning all connected geometry of the same connection, all the, all the geometry that's connected to itself, will get the same attribute. And the entire duplicated grid that we have here does not touch the original grid, they're separate, so that gets this attribute of one. No doubt you're familiar with that by now if you've done any of these other lessons. So we can use that. We can say, get that, get that attribute, class. It is an integer, so make sure that's set. And let's come up with some random offset to feed into that offset attribute uh, in there, or offset parameter, I should say. So it's gonna take in a one-dimensional input and it's gonna output a 3D vector. And that vector is gonna be the offset here. And to help us visualize it, I'm also gonna make it the color. And look what we have now. We have the two different grids on each other intersecting each other. And that's really interesting because if we apply uh, our favorite friend, Mr. Clip, Clip will show us there's now all these pockets. See these, these pockets are between the these two grids. Those pockets are themselves going to create little pieces. So here, for example, is just a thin slice of this whole thing here. Because of all the intersections, everything on you know, this side will be one object, everything on this side will be one object, but then everything in between here will also be an object. You'll have all these thin little pieces, and this is gonna be our grout. Now we can really do any number of these. 
the more we do, as you can see, the more and more, well, the heavier and heavier this is going to be, we're going to have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little pieces. Like this is an insane amount. You'd never want to do this. Three is reasonable, although even that is probably more than we need. Let's just stick to two, just to create the grout area. And then on our own, we'll subdivide. We'll break these things down ourselves in a moment. That will allow us to have more artistic control. Now these clips here are just so we can see what it's looking like. We're not actually going to use those. Cool. There you go. So we got that. Um, you could play with this a lot. Like maybe some of these pieces are going to be too big in terms of the grout. And we are going to break them down, but I don't know. You can play around with that. I'm just going to go forward with this for now. I'm going to trust that when we break it down later, it'll be fine. So let's just, let's do that on a wide scale. We force this to be one. Let's go back to the original 16 that we wanted. So now we're going to get little grout things all over the place for our main things. Now, we're also going to want to have grout on the outside of our, uh, of our big shape here. And remember, what we're actually going to be cutting is this thing. So we want to have the grout on the new cuts. And we're also going to want to have a cut, that, that center line cut that we did. And we're going to want to have the pieces on the outside. So the, the easiest way to do that is simply we generated our new cuts here. Let's just merge in before we duplicate them. Let's just merge in all of the cutters. So now we have everything. We've got the middle cut, the outside cut, which is already cut. But now when we copy and jitter them, now we've got all this. So we're going to get all these little pieces on the outside, all these little pieces on the outside, and all these centerline pieces. So look at all those those planes we have. I mean, it's just so many now, but you'll see um, it, Houdini won't have a problem with that. So we're just going to go right down to the bottom here. It's going to have to chew on this for a minute, of course, because this we are asking a lot. It's cool that it will work, but uh, it is still um, in a intense operation for it to do. And once this is done, we're going to make a, a cache so that we won't have to wait this long again.